Hey guys, it's Coop from Garage Gym Reviews. I'm obviously freezing, you can tell by my outfit, but today I wanna to answer the question, if I'm starting my home gym, what would be best for me to buy? Rubber bumper plates or iron plates? Today, I'm gonna to answer that question. I'm gonna talk about the benefits of either, what you should look for, and also, which are my recommended ones in each category. So stay around for that. Let's get into it. Okay, so one of the first questions you're gonna ask as you're building your home gym or as you're upgrading your home gym is what plate should I use? When you go to your commercial gym, you're gonna have pretty much every plate available to you, a lot of them at least. You're gonna have iron plates. That's what a majority of them are using. If you have a little bit nicer gym or you have a gym that's kind of keeping up with the times, they've started to have like deadlift or weightlifting platforms and because they don't wanna make a ton of noise, they often have a bumper plates there too. Or if you go to a CrossFit gym, actually they're pretty much only gonna have bumper plates, but in your home gym, you get to decide. Now, in a perfect world, like the answer is both. In my garage gym, I have both iron plates and competition bumper plates. I used to have iron plates, competition bumper plates, competition powerlifting calibrated plates, and everything in between, but I've kind of found like the ones I use most often are these two type of plates. But I wanna go through kind of the benefits and what to look for in each and then also which ones I think are the best in each category after literally using, testing, reviewing, comparing everything of all the plates that are in the market. So let's get into it. So first is, this is kind of a new thing. For years, it was always iron plates are the ones you should get if you're on a budget. And the reason you should get them is because iron plates are the cheapest. Like full stop, that's what we said for years up until I would say like maybe two, three years ago. That's when the market flipped. It went from iron is the cheapest to now, like this may be the first time you're, you've heard this, but bumper plates are now cheaper. Bumper plates are the cheapest plate per pound that you can get. They're cheaper than any iron plate, they're cheaper than any ductile, cast iron, you name it, competition bumper, just rubber bumper plates are the cheapest weights that you can get. I think the reason is you have more and more manufacturers overseas making them and you have more and more smaller companies selling them. There's just more within that market. And also the market went from home gyms just being kind of like this small like boutique thing and now it's like a big market. It's a big market and people like to spend money and they like nice things. And so people are spending more money so you have more options. And that's why bumper plates are now cheaper. So we actually did a market analysis recently just to figure out what the price of bumper plates were in comparison to all the others that are on the market. And this is what I came up with. The bumper plates that are the cheapest are Cat Barbell. They sell a pair pretty consistently on Amazon. And then another company called Everyday Essentials. They go under different names, but the plates always say Everyday Essentials. They're kind of like the standard barbell plate that we see in the iron world. There's that for the bumper plate. The cap plates are $40 for a single 45 pound plate. So less than a dollar a pound for a bumper plate. The everyday essential plates for a 45 pound plate is 50 bucks. Now you can get them, the everyday essentials plate, if you watch for deals, which we often send them out in our email newsletter. So if you'd like to sign up for that and would like to get those deals, you can sign up at the link below like button because we're constantly sending out whenever we see deals, we're sending out the best deals. So you can get those actually even less, but that's what we're looking at kind of on average. That's how cheap they are. In comparison, the cheapest iron plates I could find are the Cap Easy Grip plates. They have like a weird shape to them. I actually have a bunch of them in my house. I bought them years ago, a ton of 10 pound plates because I was basically doing a lot of heavy rows. And that was the cheapest way I could get them. They are $63 for a 45 pound plate. So quite a bit more expensive. So if you're looking for just the cheapest plate, bumper plates are the cheapest. Then the next one is the size difference. Bumper plates come in one size pretty much. If you're gonna buy a bumper plate set, the 10 pound plates are most often gonna be the exact same size as the 45 pound plates, or even if you get 55 pound plates, or there's even 100 pound, like I know Aleiko sells a 50 kilogram competition bumper plate. They're all gonna be the same diameter, and that is 450 millimeters. The 450 millimeters is the standard because that's what the IWF, the International Weightlifting Federation, that's what they use. So that's what bumper plates are, which means if you're training somebody who's just starting to lift, 
they're gonna be able to lift at the same distance from the floor without any pulling blocks as somebody that's lifting a lot more weight. So if you're teaching kids, elderly, or just people that aren't very strong and are lifting, bumper plates are a great way to start because you have the same dimensions for all the weight increments as you do for your 45 pound plates. Iron plates though are gonna have completely different diameters. The 45 pound plates are going to be that 450 millimeters, but then every other plate is gonna be different and it's not like a specific size, it doesn't matter. So they're gonna be smaller from different brands, but there are some benefits to that in that it's just a smaller plate, so it's easier to move around and things like that. But if you just want the same size, bumper plate's the obvious choice. The other thing that's gonna be a difference though is your width. And this is a big difference for people that are very strong, but even for people that are relatively strong. The reason being, you can fit way more generally iron plates on a barbell than you can bumper plates. Now, it depends on what type of plate you're using, but generally, iron plates, you're gonna be able to fit much more weight. Here's a couple examples. The thinnest 45 pound iron plate is gonna be a calibrated powerlifting plate, and it's 22 millimeters or less than an inch. So it's like very thin. If you were to take that plate and put it on a standard Olympic barbell, which is gonna be about 16 and a half inch sleeve length, you would be able to fit 18 calibrated 45 pound plates on the end of that bar which if you factor in the entire total of that bar, including the weight of the bar, it's gonna be about 1,600 pounds. So you can fit about 1,600 pounds on that bar if you're using calibrated plates. If you were to take the thinnest competition bumper plate, you could fit seven on each side, so less than half if you were using 45 pound competition bumper plates. If you were to take what most people have in their garage gym, which is gonna be just like a black bumper or a tire plate, like a crumb rubber plate, you'd be able to fit about four. <laughs> you'd be able to fit about four, maybe five, depending on what brand you go with and depending on how thick they are. So the difference in the amount of weight you can put on there is vastly different between all the different types. So if you're looking for just the max amount of weight that you can put on a bar, obviously iron's the winner. Next is the difference in sound, and this really matters for home gyms. It doesn't always matter as much for commercial gyms, but you're building a home gym, like the sound matters. This is the reason that a lot of people will buy like drop pads so they can actually drop the weight and it doesn't become a problem, it just absorbs the sound. But rubber does that as well. If you drop iron plates, without stall mats on your floor and they just hit the concrete, obviously like it's gonna be a bad deal. You do that with rubber bumper plates, it's nice to have stall mats to drop them on rubber mats, but even if you drop your rubber plates on your foundation, the rubber's gonna compress, so it's quieter. So it's not gonna make as much noise as your iron plates. Also, they don't make as much noise when you put them on. Now, personally, I really like the sound of iron. If you like the sound of iron, let me know in the comments. Let me know, do you prefer the sound of iron? going on the bar and the sound of the bar clinking with the iron, or do you prefer rubber bumper plates? <laughs> I think it says a lot about who you are. But I will say that the iron plates, just the sound, the feel, like it just has that, I don't know, underground feel. It maybe because I grew up in a garage gym that had iron plates and like dust and chalk and power lifting. That's the kind of vibe like I like and was around. But the sound of those going on and the feel of it, it just sounds really nice. But overall, iron plates are gonna be louder. In addition to that, rubber is going to be more absorbent because rubber compresses. One of the factors actually, one of like the most important specs when you're looking at bumper plates is called the durometer, the shore A hardness. It basically tells you how hard the rubber is, which then tells you how much it's gonna bounce and how much it's gonna absorb. The lower the number, the softer the rubber is and the more it's gonna bounce. The higher the number, the harder, and the less it'll bounce, just the more thud it will be. A good bumper plate is gonna be somewhere between 80 and like 95. Your competition bumpers are gonna be on the higher end, your more just standard bumpers are gonna be on the lower end, and then your crumb bumpers are gonna be even lower than that, and they're gonna bounce a lot because they're basically like tires. For most people, a shore A durometer of around 80 to 90, that's what I'd look for. When you start getting a lot softer than that, they're just gonna warp and bend and just not work very well. But the bumpers are what absorb way more than iron. Then durability, iron is obviously gonna be more durable. Cast iron is gonna be very durable. Even more durable than that would be ductile iron. Even more durable than that probably would be like a steel plate, which we reviewed some like weighted out plates that are basically just steel that are CNC'd out. Those are just gonna be incredibly durable, but I'd say generally iron will blow away bumper plates in the long term. If you're wanting something that you can literally pass down to your kids, pass down to your grandkids, then you're probably gonna want something that's gonna be made of iron versus 
rubber. The rubber will end up separating from the center hub, especially if you're using them a lot, you're dropping them a lot, but generally iron's gonna be much more durable. Now to my recommendations. If I'm looking at iron plates, these are the ones that I most often recommend. One would be the Rogue Deep Dish. That's the ones that I use. I freaking love those plates. They're actually a really good price and they're ductile iron and they're made in the USA from a company that will warranty them and make sure they're good. I, those are plates I use every day. My favorite plates, I love those things. They look good and you can fit on a lot on the bar. If you want something that you can fit even more on the bar, you can go with like calibrated plates or you can go with their USA Olympic plates. Another company that's doing something really cool in this space is Rep. They now have their USA equalizers. They're these plates right here. They're made in the USA as well. They're thinner than the Rogue Deep Dish plate, more like a standard plate, but have the nice like six shooter style plate on them, easy to grip, move around, really good plate, very accurate as well. Then if you're just like on the cheap end, you just want like the cheapest iron plate, weight is weight to you, you don't care, you're not dropping a lot, then cap. That'd probably what you'd be your cheapest. They're easy grip plate. We'll put a link below the like button. You can get them from Amazon. I don't love those plates. They have a smaller diameter, so they're not exactly 450 millimeters, but they're close. They're made of cheap cast iron. Like I would not drop them. They can chip, they can break. But if you just want the cheapest iron plate, those are them. Then bumper plates. I think this is where it gets more interesting. We have an article, by the way, if you'd like to see all of our recommendations on the best bumper plates, best iron plates, check out the link below the like button. But I would say generally, these are the companies I'd look at. The top tier black bumper plates in the industry, I think are the Rogue HG 2.0 plates and the American Barbell plates. They're made from like the best rubber in the industry. Those are great for really high use commercial facilities or CrossFit gyms. But for your home gym, I think a good value option are the Rogue Echo plates. The fringe sport bumper plates are really nice as well. Their tens are warrantied about better than anybody else. So if you're using the plate with just tens, you can use those. And then if you want the just absolute cheapest in the market, it's gonna be the everyday essentials. But man, don't expect durability with those. They're gonna warp, they're gonna break. I've seen them crack before. They're just really cheap plates. If you want something that's gonna just be like bulletproof basically, last a long time, you can use them outside. Then you can look at something like high temps, which are basically a crumb rubber plate. They're tires that have been put in a mold with like epoxy and then compressed. That's an option too. I use those outside at my garage. When I'm lifting outside, they work really well, but those would be my recommendations. Okay. There's a lot on iron versus bumper. Which one would I choose? If I was starting my garage gym, for the training that I do, it would probably be iron, just because I'm not doing a ton of Olympic weightlifting anymore, I used to. If I was gonna be doing a lot of Olympic weightlifting where I was dropping from overhead or dropping from the front rack, then of course you want some bumper plates, but another option is combining them. Like, that is an option that you can do. It's not the greatest thing for the barbell, but it's something that you can do too, so that you put basically the bumper plates on the inside collar and then the rest is iron. And oftentimes what's gonna hit first is gonna be that bumper plate and it's basically gonna save your floor. But those are my opinions on rubber versus iron. Let me know which ones do you have in your garage gym? Which ones do you like the best? Is there a specific recommendation for either iron or bumper that you think is better than the ones that I've given? Just let me know in the comments. This has been cool from Garage Home Reviews. I'll see you next time. Peace.